I've come to tell you a story, a story of my recollections and of how my recollections came to be. You see, on a calm winter's eve, I was at the park, at the park on an eve that I remember as being so lucid yet so free. And at the park on the calm winter's eve, I sat upon a bench, and I pondered of all the beauty that my eyes could see. And of the beauty that I could see was that of a finch, a finch roosting upon a branch in a great oak tree. And the finch that roosted upon the branch in the great oak tree had begun to lay his lone wandering gaze upon me. And as the finch laid his lone wandering gaze upon me, he began to sing a song, a song of glamour and grace and glee. And the song of glamour and grace and glee that the finch had sung was a song that was destined just for me. And of this song that was destined just for me, a burning passion had arose from within that ignited an urge to flee. And from that urge to flee that had been ignited within me, I stood up and I ran. And I ran away from the finch that had roosted in the great oak tree. And away from the great oak tree I ran. I ran towards my rickety old home that stood atop of a cliff near the quivering waves of the sea. And upon reaching my home that stood atop the cliff near the quivering waves of the sea, I barreled through the door and thus finally decreed that I had to scribe down my recollections, or else my recollections would be lost for me. For the gaze of a finch roosting in a great oak tree who had sung a song that had been destined for me, that ignited an urge to flee from a cause of beauty and glee on a calm winter's eve to run towards my home upon a cliff near the quivering sea, had led me to decree that I must scribe down these recollections for thee. And so I hastily wrote down my recollections. And I recall these recollections. I recall these recollections to thee. You see, on a soothing spring day, I was at the garden. At the garden on a day that I remember as being so vivid yet so free. And at the garden on the soothing spring day, I sat upon a stump and I gathered of all the elegance that my eyes could see. And of the elegance that I could see was that of a cardinal. A cardinal perched upon a twig in a grand birch tree. And the cardinal that perched upon the twig in the grand birch tree had begun to lock her soul roving glare upon me. And as the cardinal locked her soul roving glare upon me, she began to chirp a hymn. A hymn of elation and excitement and esprit. And the song of elation and excitement and esprit that the cardinal had chirped was a hymn that was appointed just for me. And of this hymn that was appointed just for me, a blazing fervor had surged from within that kindled a rush to flee. And from that rush to flee that had been kindled within me, I rose up, and I dashed, and I dashed away from the cardinal that had perched in the grand birch tree. And away from the grand birch tree I dashed, I dashed toward my decrepit aged dwelling that had settled upon a bluff alongside the trembling surf of the sea. But then, all of a sudden, there was a moose. And as I crossed paths with this moose, I had thus declared a truce. And upon declaring a truce with this moose, I then found myself to be atop of his caboose. And on the caboose of that moose, forward he trotted, he trotted, and I do not know what he plotted. And I sat atop of the caboose of the moose with whom I had struck a truce. Forward he trotted, and unknowingly he plotted. And with my fate in disguise, I decided to close my eyes. And when I opened my eyes, it was to my surprise that I had arrived at the soup store. And upon arriving at the soup store, I was filled with an urge that inspired me to soar. I was filled with an urge to purchase clothes that I would most definitely adore. And so I wandered the aisles of the store. And so I wandered them, and I wandered them, and I wandered them some more. With a pitter-patter of my feet tapping against the floor. All in a valiant effort to explore. But to no avail, as there were no clothes to score. And with a sudden realization that struck me to my core. In pure horror, I unleashed a great roar. What was I doing trying to buy clothes at the soup store? Alas, I could not bear this search anymore, and in a moment of defiance that I could not ignore, with firm swiftness I scurried towards the door. But as I approached the entrance of the store, there stood the moose of whom I thought I had struck a truce, the one who as he trotted unknowingly plotted, a fate that had left me most unaware, a fate unaware that I foolishly for had not given a care, and from this affair arose an epiphany that had left me in pure despair, for I had discerned that what I had actually endured was that of a delirious nightmare. And with such a scare I had begun to pull at my hair, as the pain from the pain of the moose whose intentions were most obtuse had left me broke. A howl he did invoke, and he charged forward through the smoke, which had imbued me into a stroke, and as the curves of his antlers met the fibers of my cloak, with an immense thrash I had finally awoke. In one foul croak I had suddenly awoke to find myself finally free. I found myself free from the moose who dare broke his truce, whose intentions were most obtuse, who enacted a fate to such a terrible degree. A moosey fate I had escaped, and without a murmur or a plea, I stumbled to my desk and I brushed off the debris, and I began to scribe down my recollections, so that my recollections would not be lost for me. For this is a story, a story of my recollections, and of how my recollections came to be. You see, on a warm summer's morn, I was at the plaza, at the plaza on a morn that I remember as being so glowing yet so free. And at the plaza on the warm summer's morn, I sat upon a ledge, and I observed of all the allure that my eyes could see.